Sir Victor Goddard, A Flight Through Time, it says. Does it give an author? It does not give an author. But it's at canyoustandthetruth.com. That's easy to remember. In 1935, while a wing commander, Goddard flew a Hawker Hart. It was a biplane to Edinburgh, Scotland, from his home base in Andover, England, for a weekend visit. On the Sunday before flying back, Goddard visited an abandoned airfield in Drem near Edinburgh, this location being closer to his final destination than the airport at which he landed. The Drem airfield, constructed during the First World War, was a shambles. The tarmac and four hangars were in disrepair. Barbed wire divided the field into numerous pastures and cattle grazed everywhere. It was now a farm, and completely useless as an airfield. It was Monday when Goddard began the flight back to his home base. The weather was dark and ominous, with low clouds and heavy rain. And here's the man himself, Air Marshal Sir Victor Goddard, knighted as well. Goddard was flying in an open cockpit over mountainous terrain, without radio navigational aids or cloud flying instruments. Rain beating down on his forehead and onto his flying goggles badly obscured his vision. He thought he could climb above the clouds, but he was wrong. He made it to 8,000 feet looking for a break in the clouds, but there was none. Suddenly Goddard lost control of his plane. It began to spiral downward. He struggled with the controls. He could speed up or slow down, but he could not stop the spin. Unsure of his location, he knew he was falling rapidly and might smash into mountains before coming out of the cloud cover. The sky became darker, the clouds turning a strange yellowish brown. The rain came down more heavily. Goddard's altimeter showed he was only a thousand feet above the ground and dropping rapidly. At 200 feet and still spiraling downward, he began to see a bit of daylight through the murky gloom. He was now flying at 150 miles an hour. He emerged from the clouds over rotating water that he recognized as the Firth of Forth, but he was still falling. Suddenly he saw directly before him a stone seawall with a path, a road, and railings on top of it. The road seemed to be slowly rotating from left to right. Cloud cover was down to 40 feet. Goddard was now flying below 20 feet and was with an instant of tragedy. A young girl with a baby carriage ran through the pouring rain. She ducked her head just in time to avoid the wingtip of the plane. Goddard succeeded in leveling out the plane after that. He barely missed striking the water after, the cl after clearing the sea wall by a few feet. He was now flying only several feet above a stony beach. Fog and rain obscured all distant visibility, but Goddard somehow located his position. He identified the road to Edinburgh and soon was able to discern the black silhouettes of the Durham airfield hangars ahead of him, the same airfield they had visited the day before. The rain became a deluge. The sky grew darker, and Goddard's plane was shaken violently by the turbulent weather as it sped towards the Drem hangars and into a different world. Suddenly the sky turned bright with golden sunlight. I think there's some more reading over here at StrangerDimensions.com, and it's a story by Rob Schwartz entitled Sir Victor Goddard's Time Slip Adventure. The clouds broke, and he could see the ground again, and off in the distance was the Drem airfield. As he approached the airfield, hoping to reorient himself, suddenly the storm vanished, and the sky turned bright and sunny. It stopped raining. Everything became clear. But something was different this time. The airfield at Drum was no longer abandoned. In fact, it looked good as new. He could see mechanics down below and four planes, each painted yellow, sitting on the runway. One was a model he'd never seen before, a monoplane, unlike anything in the Royal Air Force in 1935. And what were the mechanics wearing? Blue overalls? This, along with the yellow planes, Goddard found strangest of all, RAF mechanics in 1935 wore brown overalls, not blue, 
and there were no yellow planes to his knowledge. He did not have much time to think about it, though, because he was flying too quickly to truly understand what he was seeing. By the time he passed over the airfield, the storm had suddenly returned, and the bright sunshine dissolved into hard rain, and those strange yellow clouds engulfed him once more. Once again, he found himself battling for control of his plane, but this time he won, and he was able to land safely at his home base. When finally he landed, he couldn't help but tell his friends what had happened. As you'd expect, he was met with skepticism, and afterward he mostly kept the story to himself. He didn't want anyone to think he was crazy. He'd later retell it, among other things, in his 1975 book, Flight Towards Reality. The final twist to this bizarre account. In 1939, the vision that Sir Victor Goddard saw at the Drem airfield actually came to pass. The RAF began to paint their training planes yellow, and a new monoplane, the Magister, just like the one he witnessed in 1935, joined the roster. By that year, even the mechanics overalls had been updated to blue. And of course, the airfield at Drem had made a comeback. Goddard's story has gained much popularity over the years, and some time ago was featured in Fate magazine. 